Hey Fingsters! Today let us discuss the difference between XML and HTML. Now XML stands for Extensible Markup Language, while HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Now as you can see, both of them are markup languages, but the purpose they were designed were completely different. So let us have a look at the differences one by one. The first and foremost difference is HTML is used to display data whereas XML is used to transport and store data. Now in order to understand this, let us have a look at an example. Let us open up an HTML example. So as soon as I opened the HTML example, you can see that you can see a web page. Now the, you can visualize this page, but there's no code behind it. In order to visualize the HTML code, you have to right click on the web page and click on view page source. As soon as you do that, you can see the entire HTML code behind this web page. So this makes it clear that HTML code helps us to display data in a more presentable format. As in this case, where we can see that we have a web page which displays some data. Now coming to XML, it is majorly used to transport data. So let us also have a look at another example where we have an XML document. So as you can see, this is an XML document. And this is not some fancy web page with lot of images and other stuffs. It is simply data. So that's the purpose of an XML document. It focuses on the data rather than how to present the data. Now that brings us to the next difference. HTML is not case sensitive, whereas XML is case sensitive. Now this difference is quite important. Tags in HTML are predefined whereas tags in XML are user defined. So what do we mean by that? This is the XML document. Now if you see, we have numerous tags like emails, then we have email, then the to tag, from tag, but all these tags are defined by us or the user or the developer of the web page or the document. In other words, the tags used in XML are not implicit to the XML document. You can define the tags the way you want to. But this is not the case with HTML. In HTML, we have predefined set of tags. So let us have a look at the HTML example that we just viewed. Now, if you look closely, we have the head tag, the body tag, the h1 tag, the paragraph tag, and all these tags are predefined or they are implicit to the HTML document. If you try and use a different tag other than P, for example, if you use instead of P anything that you want, for example, if you write paragraph or maybe your name, this won't work with HTML, but that will work with XML. So I hope this was clear. And finally, in HTML, it is not necessary to use a closing tag. Whereas in XML, each and every tag must be closed. That is, XML makes it mandatory to close a tag. Now, having said that, we already know that XML is used to transport data and store data. Now, why do we even need to scrape data from XML then? Because it is already being used to store data. Now, in order to understand that, let us have a look at the example that we just discussed. If you look closely in this document or in this XML document, you'll find that it has numerous tags like to, from, heading, which makes it easy for the receiver of the XML document to understand what is the purpose of the data between the tags. But is this completely readable? Yes, it is to an extent, but it is not soothing to the eye. Maybe you want to have this in a tabular format. Maybe you want to extract it such that it is more convenient for you to visualize the text within the email, the sender and the receiver. 
That is where scraping the XML document can help you. So let us have a look at another example or another XML document. If you have a look, this is a catalog which lists numerous plants, their names, their botanical name or their scientific names and numerous other factors that govern these plants and the price at which you can buy them. Now suppose you want to extract the name of the plant, the scientific name of the plant as well as the price associated with the plant. So let us try and extract the data that we need using the beautiful soup library. So let us dive into our coding window and as you can see I have created a file by the name sample.xml and the entire XML document is within this file sample.xml. Now it's time to extract the data that we need which was the name of the plant, the scientific name of the plant and the price of this plant. Now as I mentioned that I am going to use the beautiful soup library to scrape the data. So let us import the beautiful soup library from BS4 import beautiful soup. Now let us try and open up this sample XML file in our program and then read it. So I would say file open then sample dot XML and in the read mode. Okay. Then I have my contents variable which equals to file dot read. Now in this part of the code I simply opened up the sample dot XML file and then I'm reading the contents within this file. Now it's time to create the beautiful soup object. So I'll name it soup equals beautiful soup and then I'll pass contents to it. And now I need to use a parser. So I'll use the LXML parser. Now this is the recommended parser if you are trying to parse an XML document. So I'm going to follow the convention. Okay, we have now successfully created our beautiful soup object. It is now time for us to extract the data that we need. So let us first create the variables that are going to store the data that we need. I would say plant name, scientific name and the price. Okay. Now within the plant name, I will try and store the names of the plants. So if we have a look at our XML document, we can see that the common tag stores the names of the plant. So we are going to use this tag and then extract the name of the plant. So I would say soup dot find all. Now the find all function is used to find and scrape data from the parse tree. So soup dot find all and the tags from which we want to extract our data is common. Similarly for the scientific name we would say soup dot find all and the scientific name is within the botanical tag. So we are going to use that botanical and finally the price. So the price is within the price tag. So we would say soup dot find all price. That's it. We have now successfully extracted the contents that we need. It is now time to display the contents the way we want. So in order to do that I would use a for loop. So let's use the for loop for n comma tag in and then I'll use an enumerate function to keep count of each iteration and then plant name. Now I'll simply print the name of the plant name equals tag dot text. Now I'll print the scientific name of the plant. So I would say scientific name equals scientific name and then I'll use the counter variable n. Similarly I'll print the price of the plant. So I would say price equals price 
at the nth index. Now I hope you understand why I am using n or the counter variable. This is because scientific name and price these are lists and I'm trying to extract each element from this list with the help of their index. So n helps me to keep count of each index. Now let us try and execute this code and check if this works. Yeah, it indeed worked. But as you can see, we also have the tags. So this is what we want to remove. That is where the text attribute comes into play. So we would say price at the nth index dot text. This should help us to get rid of the tags and display only the data that we want. Now let's execute our code once again. And there we go. We have successfully extracted the name, the scientific name and the price of each plant. That's how you can scrape data from an XML document. With that, we come to the end of this video. I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.